video. This is a quick overview of how I design and build my own ebb and flow hydroponics systems. The first thing we're going to look at is the two largest components. You're going to need two containers. One container will be used as the nutrient reservoir and the other container will be used as the flood table. Now these two containers can be just about anything. Uh, something you might have on hand or something that you can purchase locally from uh, uh, your Mega Mart type store or a home improvement store. For this example I'm going to be using two storage totes that you can buy oh, just about anywhere. Now in the homemade systems that I've built so far usually the flood table sits directly on top of the reservoir. In this example I'm going to be using two containers that have the same width and length so one can actually sit down inside the other and still maintain room for the nutrient reservoir in the bottom. Now this is simply the design I've chosen to go with. There are many variations on this type of system. Now at this point it's up to you to decide what form of ebb and flow system you want to build. As you can see there are many variations of the ebb and flow system. So you can make a custom design based totally on how much room you have and what you wish to accomplish with it. You don't have to settle for someone else's idea of the perfect system. Now let's take a look inside the nutrient reservoir and see what other components we're going to need. The first internal component we're going to need is a water pump. The size of the pump you're going to use will be based on the size of your system and what is available to you. For my project I chose a 200 gallon per hour one intended to be used in a small decorative fountain. When you're looking to buy one what I look for is how far it can lift a column of water. It's usually stated somewhere on the box. With this type of system you don't need a really large one to produce a lot of pressure. You just need it to lift the solution up into the flood table. You're also going to need some type of pipe or hose that fits the outlet of your particular pump and this will carry the oxygen enriched nutrient solution from your reservoir up into your flood table. Next I like to use an aquarium pump and this will pump air into the nutrient solution. Of course you'll also need the various tubes and air stones to make this happen. Next you're going to have to install an overflow tube in your flood table. Now this serves two purposes. One, it will prevent your tank from overflowing and secondly it helps you maintain the level of the solution in the flood table. Now I'm going to pause the animation here for a moment. Uh, just to let you know, I'm not going to tell you exactly how to run the wires and the various tubes and hoses into your system. I'm going to leave that up to you because that's part of the fun of building your own homemade system. Now that that's all built, uh, let's get into the operation of it. First of all, let's put some nutrient solution in into our reservoir. And also we can go ahead now and, and plug in our, our aquarium pump and get some air into the nutrient solution. Now the airflow into the nutrient solution is important because it does a couple of things. Uh, one thing it does is keep algae from growing down in your tank from stagnant water and secondly the oxygen is good for the roots of your plants that are being grown hydroponically. Now let's take a look inside our flood table and also we'll plug in our fountain pump. Now the pump is going to start pumping the solution from your reservoir up into your flood table till it reaches the top of the overflow pipe which will maintain your nutrient solution at that level. Now let's take a closer look at your overflow pipe because this is going to largely determine how your system will operate. You can adjust the overflow pipe shorter and you'll be able to use smaller net pots uh, adjusting it more towards the top and you'll be able to use larger net pots. Also, even though this is an ebb and flow system, you can actually adjust your overflow pipe high and leave the pump running and it can be used as a circulating type deep water system. And setting it very low, you can use it as a NFT type system also. 
Now once the water pump is unplugged, or even better if it's plugged into an electric timer and is switched off, you'll notice that the solution will drain back into the reservoir. Now, there are many ways to do this and I prefer to use gravity so I drill a few small holes in the bottom of my flood table to allow the solution to flow freely back into the reservoir. Well I hope this information was helpful to you and it encourages you to go out and build your own homemade ebb and flow hydroponic system. Thanks for watching.